Hi, my name is Dr. Patel. Uh, thank you for choosing us for your upcoming cataract consultation. Um, the actual day is going to be a pretty busy day when you come in. There's going to be lots of measurements we're going to get. Uh, we're going to dilate you and do a full eye exam. Um, and then at that point, I'll be able to come and speak to you specifically about your eyes and what your options will be. But I thought it'd be good to send you this link beforehand just to prime you with what uh, we'll be talking about during that visit. And this can serve as something that you can refer back to since I do go over quite a bit. That being said, if you have any questions at all, our office is very reachable. Just call in and uh, you can ask to speak with me or my staff and we'll be happy to clear up any questions you might have. Um, one thing I'll note, uh, hopefully my staff reached out to you that if you are a contact lens wearer, you should uh, not wear them for about two weeks prior to the consultation. Contact lenses do impact our measurements. If you're getting this video and your appointment's tomorrow, it's okay, still keep the appointment, come on in. Um, I can still get some of those measurements and have a, um, a fairly accurate conversation with you. I'll just need to repeat those measurements prior to your actual surgery, so to be sure uh, the plan we create is still accurate. Um, first, uh, the first thing I'd like to do is just talk about what a cataract is, and then we can get into what we do about that and what your options are. And so when you're born, you're born with a clear lens in your eye, and that lens allows you to focus on the entire world. As you age, lots of things about your body change, including the lens in your eye. It turns cloudy, and that's what we call a cataract. So the treatment for a cataract is a five to 10 minute surgery where I go in and take that cloudy lens out and replace it with a clear plastic lens. And here's where all your options come out. Uh, you might seen commercials or different ads about all the different lens implants out there. There are many. Um, I'm just gonna generically speaking categorize them uh, so you have an understanding of what each one is. Uh, the first one I always talk about, we just call it the standard lens. Uh, the reason we call it that is because that's the default option that everybody's a candidate for, and that's the one your insurance will fully cover. And what I mean by that is when you have surgery, there's often a copay or a deductible that you're responsible for. There's no additional fee to that lens that would bypass the insurance and get directly placed to you. Um, and the standard lens is a great lens. Um, you're going to see much better than you're seeing now because it is clear and your character is not. Uh, the one thing we tell folks with the standard lens is that the majority of people do end up getting a bifocal after surgery and to clear up the rest of their vision. Uh, there's often a little bit of um, astigmatism left behind and glasses ends up treating that. A lot of people do use this as an opportunity to minimize their need for glasses afterward. If that's the case, then what they do is they upgrade into one of three options. Um, so the first option I talk about is a toric lens. So you can call that option two. Uh, the torque lens is more of a custom lens where I take the measurements and I design your astigmatism into the actual lens and place that into your eye. Uh, the torque lens is a monofocal lens, meaning one focus point. And so ultimately I set that torque lens to wherever you want to see the clearest. For example, most people choose distance. And so with the torque lens, your distance vision would be pretty good without glasses. You still would need reading glasses for up close in that situation. Um, the nice thing about the Toric lens though is that your prescription for reading glasses is the same thing as an over-the-counter reader would be. And so that's the benefit is that you wouldn't really need glasses to drive anymore and you can just use over-the-counter readers going forward. You wouldn't need some fancy prescription. Um, the quality of vision with the Toric lens is excellent and so it really just is a matter of where you want the focus point to be with the understanding you wear glasses for whatever it is you, you didn't choose. Um, for folks that want more range than that, they will then choose to upgrade further uh, into a multifocal lens. Uh, and this lens is kind of what it sounds like. It's a, it's a lens that has technology built into it that splits the light coming into your eye. So you get a distance fo focus point, a mid-range one, and then even an up close one. Um, there's some caveats with the multifocal lens. Uh, the first being that you, you should be able to see things like your phone and um, like a newspaper uh, up close. But the up close isn't perfect. If you get small enough font, the example I give is the fine print on a medicine bottle, um, or if you're in a dimly lit restaurant trying to read a menu, those might be situations where you need to pull out a plus one cheater to help read those things. And so what I tell folks that get the multifocal lens is that 90, 95% of your tasks will all, you'll be able to see without glasses, but there will be things here or there, you can call them situational, um, that you'll need to use readers for. Um, the other thing I like to make sure people are aware of with the multifocal lens is that light splitting technology that gives you this great range during the day does have a side effect that you can experience at nighttime. Uh, primarily, you'll notice a, a glare or halo profile around light sources. So the most common example is a car headlight. 
you wouldn't just see the headlight, you'd see sort of these halo, glary type spider web type thing coming off of it. Um, if you're interested in this lens, just tell me, I'll, I'll show you an actual sample photo online of what that could look like. Um, for those who like to do a lot of inter internet researching, yes, some people out there don't really notice the glare halo profile, but that's not the expectation with the lens. Uh, in my view, it's just physics and optics. This light study technology is always doing that, so everyone should experience it. So that's the key. If you're thinking about um, opting for the multifocal lens, you should be expecting the glare halo profile on the back end. And if the idea of that doesn't bother you, you're probably a good candidate to tolerate that lens really well. Whereas if you think that might bother you in any way, shape, or form, you were the person I would encourage not to get that lens. Um, and I would say either you can do the, the standard lens or the torque lens. Uh, the last lens option I'll talk to you about is sort of the newest one on the market. It's called the light adjustable lens. Um, those first three I just talked about are all similar in that the way we choose the lens is we look at your measurements, we pick the lens, and we put it into your eye but there is some variables that we can't account for in typical cataract surgery, uh, meaning it's not really LASIK. Uh, those variables are, you know, where does your eye heal that lens in position and how does your signalism shift or change after the surgery? For the vast majority, those changes are pretty small and so those lenses all tend to be very accurate, but everyone usually has a small residual prescription and that sometimes can be a lot and lead to a, a blur even after the, you've had the surgery. Uh, the light adjustable lens is sort of the newest technology that allows us to adjust the actual power of the lens and the prescription while it's in your eye after you've healed up. So those variables of where the lens gets healed in and how your cornea heals in the aftermath aren't as relevant because we basically put the lens in your eye, let you heal, and then once you're healed up and we go do a refraction, we go better one, better two, we determine what the final prescription would be to make you potentially 20-20 in the distance. But instead of giving you glasses for it, we have a light delivery system that we put that information into and it uses a light to change the power of the lens while it's in your eye in a non-invasive manner. And that, the, the real nice thing about that is it's very flexible. You can decide to uh, have distance focus, but then move one into the mid-range and move it back out. Um, it, the technology is pretty amazing. If you're interested in this lens, uh, there's gonna be a lot more I talk to you about on the actual day of the visit. But in a nutshell, those are your different options. Um, you know, when you have a cataract, all four are going to result in better vision than you're dealing with now. The, the real difference is, is how much you'll need your glasses on the aftermath. Um, and so when I actually see it, I'll tell you more specifically about what each lens can potentially do for you and if you're a candidate for certain ones and if you're not a candidate for certain ones. But again, you can always refer back to this video um, just to give a, a broad overview of the different lens options that are available. Um, thank you for listening and I'll see you on your day of uh, consultation.